start with Andrew's question. Um, let me see. Having an issue adding CSS dates after. Are you up for sharing your screen real quick and walking yeah. us through? Of course. Let me do that just now. And then um, as far as the agenda goes, we also have Anne and John. And if Dominic hops on to ask about Chrome extensions, we can go through that. And then if anyone else is on the call today and you have something, you can just feel free to chat it in the chat below. Okay. So you can see my screen, yeah? Yep. Yeah, we can see it. Fine. So basically I'm trying to implement uh, this, this text box, basically this tooltip container. Yep. Um, so I've got this, this uh, CSS, top bits, no problem at all. It's this section I'm having difficulty with, with the, uh, the after element. Yeah. So I've created the a div. I've uh, created a tooltip container styling, which is this one. Yeah, which is perfect. This top section. So this bottom section, I'm just not entirely sure how I implement that. So my thinking was, and you can tell me if this is right or wrong, which is probably wrong. Um, my thinking was that I'd go to states and add a new state. Exactly. What do I put in here? Do I just put in the after? Do I put in the tooltip? You the actually, so builder automatically puts one colon when you type okay. it in here, but I believe the befores and afters require two, right, Drew? It's so, actually, it doesn't require two. You can use one for afters, but I think it's better practice to put two. Like when I use a before and after, I go colon, colon, after. Yeah. So, so the reason I mentioned that though is because in this case, yeah, you would write colon after, but normally like for hover and other states, you just write hover and yeah, builder adds the colon it. for you. Okay. So I add that, I create the style. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And now I'm you add stuff. Now you add you... properties to and it. And I just add that, add that element, these elements to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Well, that's very simple. Yeah. And you do have control. Uh, cool. Like, like if you created a state and you accidentally oh. set the wrong. Um, yeah, it's the wrong, wrong one. <laughs> the wrong selector. Um, there we go. That selector there, you can see, you can see yep. there how it automatically added the extra colon for you. Oh, yeah. So if you yeah. ever mess up, you can just edit that. Um, oh, right. Because okay. it still controls that. So I delete, leave that selector in leave there. That. Yeah, you, so want, you want to leave that because that's what Builder uses to target the, the parent. Oh, perfect. Uh, well, that was really straightforward, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And there you go. Thank yeah, you. I was having trouble. I, I wasn't sure whether to use the colons uh, and the after or whether I needed to put in the tooltip container colon colon after, but that's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely need to level up that UI to uh, specify that a little bit better. And that's really, fine. we can actually display what the end result will look like. That way, when you type it, you can see what it will actually create. It'll help Great. a lot of users for sure. That's perfect. Nice and simple. That's how I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should start off with something like that every office hour. <laughs> let's, let's just take the win at the beginning. <laughs> nice to have a win. Right. Yep. We are one down. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. So next up, John, are you up for joining the call and sharing your screen so we can go through your total duration of days by stage thing? Yeah, this is probably going to take a big chunk of it. Do you want to do something a little simpler and then we do this towards the end? Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's that's very considerate. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's do Anne. Are you on the call? Uh, yes. Hey. Uh, hi. Let's run through your help. So as you're pulling your things up, you need help debugging an issue, setting the first row item in a repeating list as default and then how to make a four column table responsive. Right, so same question as last week. Last time we, do, we did uh, this one with the, it's called native language, and this is target language. And for some reason it's working for <laughs> the target language. And the next thing that I did using uh, the method that we did last time, which was to, to Add a compare. Wait, hold on. Let me do last one. Yeah, so change the select variable. 
uh, native language, and then it checks the ID. And what we did, wait, wait a minute. Did we do this? We did something with the air array index. What was that? <laughs> oh, I page load. Remember. Sorry, page load. Yeah, it's on page low with the in, in the row, and then we compare the value. So here we have if we set a collection, and if the language is supported, which is one, we do nothing, and otherwise we disable the other the rest of the button because they are not supported. And then we do a if then check the condition, and then what we, what we did last time was this: we set an array index, so then only. Oh, uh, the first one is always selected. So this method works on target language card and the uh, daily goals that I just showed you. So when I went to that page, it's automatically selected. But for some reason, it's the same thing. It's not happening for native language card. And I tried the console lock method to debug, but I just don't know if that's even helpful. Um. The first thing I would look at is to make sure that the array index is enabled, right, for the grid. Like maybe that got toggled off because you array. do have control to enable and disable that. Mm -hmm. um, can we like, can you go to the grid where this that one. that card displays in, like the parent? Yes, this one. And then go to the properties. Uh, so it is on. See down there that second toggle okay. include array index. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's good. Um, there's another check in there, right? Like you say to select it, but there's also like a check, like if this language is available or something. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's like a, another place where it could be failing. You know? Yeah. So if you go back to that card, maybe we can mm -hmm. just step through yeah. that. Um, and the first thing I would confirm is to make sure that the page load is actually the flow that's running. Mm -hmm. um, one way I do that is I click on the page load like you did, and I just add a one to the name at the top just to change it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then on the left side, go to elements what? and then click on the page body. And then in here, you see where it says flows. OK, so mm -hmm. that confirms that that is the okay. one that's set. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just a little trick that I do just to verify. Sometimes if you drop um, like other components or things mm -hmm. on the page, if it has those actions with the same names, it'll bring them in with the same name. And sometimes they get confused. Um, so OK, so let's go back to the flows. And you can remove that one. Um, so the first thing that runs in here is page binding. Can we go in that and just see what happens? Okay, so it's just the regular. Okay, go back to the page load. Mm -hmm. Then the click on that condition. So this here is looking at a value in a field called languages. And then that does nothing. Um, do we? Do you know? Um, like when that loads, I guess it is disabling it because you can see the other ones disabled, right? Mm -hmm. Go into the disabled. Is there anything happening in that flow? No, it's just styling. Okay, yeah. go back to the page load, and let's go to the if then logic check. So this is saying on the current page looking for the variable array index uh, if you click like do like a triple click in the value for the variable name where it says array index oh. so it highlights it do a triple click i just want to see make sure there's okay there's no spaces before or after so that's good okay. uh and that's just saying if it equals zero then said, uh, put your mouse over the test value, it's text. The other one that's working, do we know, are those targeting a number type? Like maybe it's um, searching a string, but the value is a number, do we know that? Or yeah, it's also the same as this It's one. the same? Right. Okay, and then go into this flow. Let's see what this is doing. So this is doing another check where it says if the language supported is zero. Which is not available. 
um, do nothing. Uh, one thing we can do is we can do like a console log on the yeah. do nothing and also on that next flow, the select native, mm -hmm. just to see which one it's running through. Um, oh, and actually, I think you had a do nothing on the previous one, so we might need to temporarily remove uh, that one that says do not nothing here, uh, yeah. just click in that action that's selected and set it to the empty, just so we know it doesn't run through that. And then let's go back to the do nothing, um, like the actual flow. Oh. And in here, we can just change that to say do nothing, just so we know that this is the one that's for this one. And then copy that. Uh, console log action, the actual action. Yeah, click that, copy that. And then go to the one that's doing the select. Uh, which one's the doing the default, this one? Default the, uh, uh, with the array? Uh, yeah, go through here and then open it from this, the flow this. here. Right. And then click the little arrow to open that one. This one. No, 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 because we want to. We just want to put a console log to see if it's even getting there. But didn't the select native nothing? language, right? Yeah, yeah. That yeah, that that. Flow. Yeah, click that oh, just to make exactly. sure it's going, and then paste that action we had copied, oh, okay. and then just type the name of this action. Grab the name from the top and put it in the console log. We're essentially just going to log the names of the action. So when it runs, we can see oh. what's being okay. ran through. Yeah. And then open that condition above. And then if it runs through the do nothing, we already have the log. Uh, then open that next one, step two, and paste that console log again. And then just copy the name from the top. And then what does that run flow on page do? So it changes to the next page and to the, it's like the continue button. Oh, I see. So it's a different page. Okay, let's, let's test this and let's see what happens and open the developer tools and let's mm. go to the console so we can see all the logs and okay. see where it's running through. And then you'll probably need to refresh the page. Yeah, go to the console and let's refresh. Oh, the thing is, it's going to do it for every one of those cards. <laughs> so we're going to see a lot of them. Is that page loading on that first page? Because I noticed it threw in the logs before yeah. we even went, or at least visually got to the page. Loading on the first page, this page? Yeah, like refresh this and notice, uh, watch the console log. You'll see that it starts to log those actions before we're even on that page. See, yeah, right why? <laughs> well, why? It must just be low. You have it loaded in on the page, right? And you now like loaded or... a new page to load it. Uh -huh. That makes sense. Yeah. So I think we'll need to see why that's happening first. Um, well, I just... think, isn't it? It's just because imagine if you had two divs on the page and, and to load the next visually, to load the next page, you just show the other div. If you did that, it would fire all those page loads when the when the original page load runs. Right. Which I think is okay. I think it's okay. Case. Yeah. Because it's just visual, but it is getting to step two. If this uh, is gonna be one that you guys are, will think uh, maybe extra tricky, maybe we can go to Anne's question next and look at this one on our own after. What do you guys think? Uh, I don't 
Uh, yeah, it's interesting. So we continue or we move to the next question? We, we, asking we, you. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> uh, you know me, I'll just keep going until it's solved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, well, I'm actually you... unclear on like what's even going on sort of like I can't I, I'm, I'm like a little confused about it so like I think for me it might make sense just like if you want to keep moving and tackle this one offline but yeah we can move on because I, there's a lot of people today so <laughs> let's move on um that next one hopefully will be easier so um there is a footer here in my home page and then when I make it into like a screen size or mobile size do you see my screen here Mm -hmm. uh, there's a picture of um, my screenshot on the mobile. So this part is cut off and it's just a bunch of white space. So I'm not sure how to make the columns responsive. Uh, responsive. So Yep. If you um, click on the element, on the columns element. Okay, yeah. So that columns for, first of all, I apologize. That's supposed to come responsive. Sometimes it doesn't bring in the, the breakpoints. I'm not sure why I haven't seen that happen in a long time, but it probably just didn't automatically bring in what it's supposed to do to be responsive. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's an easy switch. Okay. So if you go to styling mm -hmm. tab, there's um oh okay, okay. So you have to do a, actually a, a little bit of an extra step because this is custom. Okay. So what you have is on your inline styling where it says grid template columns, uh -huh. one fr, one fr, one fr. Yeah. That's actually saying three columns. Yeah. I think originally it was three and I added another one. So should I just one add one more? Well, I'm, not, I'm actually curious how it's visually four columns, but it's saying it's three <laughs> yeah, columns. Yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I set think... to flex, that's why. So that actually, that grid template columns isn't even doing anything because okay. that only applies if the third property there display, that only applies if it's set the grid. But that's okay, you can keep flex, that, that's fine. Um, so grid flex, Maybe the easy way to do this then would be to change flex direction. Is that how you do it, Dorian, for responsive? Yeah, specify the direction. So yeah, so in this default state that you're in, oh, actually this is inline style. So there's one more step too, which is you can't do responsive design with inline mm. styles. Oh, I think I've seen that so you have to, in the class, right? Yeah, exactly. You just have to move all those inline styles into a class first. Okay. And and then and we can do you can do that right now. I can show you even how to do it really quickly. Too. Well, you probably know, but yeah, just copy that CSS. Copy. And is utility class okay, or it has to be mm -hmm. a primary class? Yeah, utility class is okay. is great. So let's create a new class. Hey, if you've learned how to copy that CSS trick in. That means you're like a builder pro. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. And then and then remove the inline styles before you go on that way because they'll override it if you don't remove them. Yeah, yeah, but I also have my little things in here. <laughs> Should I make the class for them too, or I could? Make no, no. I think actually fine. that'll be okay. okay. I mean, if you look at it and it doesn't work, you might have to do some of those. Okay. But I think they'll be okay. Okay. So now I have a class. I go in here and click one of these yeah and what i usually do you this is kind of up to you but what i usually do is that ipad size which is 768 pixels i pretty much for responsive columns and stuff i i just have them stack at that 768 size so if there's four of them side by side when you get to 768 i stack mm -hmm. them on top of each other and okay. that's like very standard simple like you might want to get more detailed than that, more nuanced, add more breakpoints, but that's okay. usually where it's like 90% of the time. Okay, let's do so, this. Yeah, so if you click on that tablet, what it allows you to do is just edit any of the properties you have on all. Mm -hmm. So right now, actually, before we click on the tablet, yeah. we just have to add a property to all first, and then we'll oh, go back and add it to the all. tablet. So if you click on that all, see it's in blue, and mm -hmm. yeah, and just add a new property with that button right up there, uh, flex-direction. And that property is telling that display flex like uh, the direction, like side by side vertical, you can kind of mm. think of it. So if you select that first one as the default row, row uh, that is what you're seeing. That's kind of like the default. So you didn't change anything visually, but now you can set that that style for responsive. So now if you click on the iPad icon, 
at the bottom, you'll see that same property flex direction. Mm -hmm. Flip it to that third one, that one. I see. And then now if you test this, and then actually double check back on all, make sure that first property stayed. It's kind of a small quirk, but sometimes, yeah, it's that you're good. So yeah, now you can test it and it should work like as you expect. But then, like I said, you might want to tweak it more if you have preference, but. Mm, I see. I just refreshed on my phone and it seems like it's still cut off on the end. So. Can you tell um, if the, if those columns are stacking or not? Oh, you know uh, what? There might be, do you have to have flex wrap on Dorian? I'm not, I'm not that familiar with do. flex to be honest. You do. Yeah. It does require flex wrap. Okay. So, so yeah, one more property in here. So just in all just on the, yeah, just in all is where you are and yeah. it's flex dash wrap. And then um, the second one there should work for you as long as it doesn't change. Yeah, that, that should work for you. Now, now try it on your phone, I think. Okay. Yeah. Let's and see. We can also see it in the preview. You just have to look, open the developer tools so you can change the responsiveness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because then we can see it here. Yep. And it's easier than. Like you can debug better than on a phone. Yeah, then we can try things, things in line. Is it? It's the little phone icon to the left of the elements tab. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. And then yeah, why is down. there a white space on it? So something yeah, is pushing too wide, and it is that footer. See that footer didn't stack. It's the footer, yeah. And I don't know. We can inspect it here and see. Yeah, that's there. the best way. Oh shoot! Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, just right click anywhere in there and do inspect. So it'll select it on the right side. And then basically we're going to look at what properties are there and, and see what's happening. So I think if you go, is that the outermost? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, that still has the style in line on it. Mm -hmm. so do you think, Dorian, that this is an update, a static file? Can we move the page on the canvas? Just move it a little bit and see if that. We had a user report something similar. Um, but like this? Oh, this, it's the component. Um, go to it's the component. Page. Yeah. Yeah. Go to the main page that's showing oh, this. Mm -hmm. And sorry, just, this is a bug. Yeah. Move the page just okay. to trigger the page. Like scroll up, scroll up. and you'll see the little plus. Plus. Uh, higher, the higher. title if, of this page. You're moving the, has, like, the page, page on the canvas. Exactly. Yeah. That's just going to oh, trigger there? a save. Yeah. Yep. Oh, let, just let like go. this? Yeah, and let go. So <laughs> Just it's, like it's, that. Yeah. Okay. And but, let's refresh. Okay, so what's the bug, guys? If you change something uh, in a component, you have to... Yeah, it's like it's not resetting. It doesn't update. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll come in the next. Shake it. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so follow. Oh, spin, okay. Shake oh that it. didn't stack. That's weird. Uh -uh. So let's you, uh, look at that and see what it right looks like now. I'm sorry? Inspect it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's still got that. Still, maybe I, I think you have to great. change the component. Yeah. To, that's this is so like the, the backstory to what we're doing right now is, is this bug where it's like if you have something in a component and you change it, builder's not updating that in the preview right now. And I found it will like in, in this next release. We we're, it's going to patch soon. I found though that see where it says your what you're selecting on versus go to point. Yeah, change that to oh, anything I actually else. Had, wasn't using the right component. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. <laughs> it's my fault. Really? <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, it's stacking now. Yeah, I'll I'll play with the styling a little bit more. And is yeah. there a sorry horizontal scroll that. or is it good? Should be good, Horizontal. right? Like it's not giving that yeah, white space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's working yeah. perfectly. Yeah, sorry nice. about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good chance to talk about that bug, actually, because other people will run into it. I've been running into it pretty much constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. Okay, y'all. Um, I'm just going to keep it moving. So next up, we have, uh, let's see, we've got Anne. We did Andrews. Um, Jeff, you have a question about a math function. And filtering a data set by a multi select drop down. Yes, I do. All right. Do you have an example or a setup you want to look at? Yep, I will pull this up. 
And then let's see how we doing on time. It's almost 1030. After Jeff, let's um, go to Christopher Browning. Okay. Have to move everything out of the way. <laughs> um, okay. So here is the, the flow that I'm looking at for this multi-select dropdown. Um, when I, I want to be able to select, I'm, I'm filtering this um, grid list down here by this. And I want to be able to say, I want all the tenders and the altos or all the tenders and the bases. So this is where I've got the, the, the filter set up. So I set the value of the grid list with the voice type um, and I've got this set so that when it when the drop down changes um, it sets a variable for voice type from this select menu and then so what ends up happening Is this okay, man? I'm having a hard time getting this. Here we go. Um, what ends up happening is it just, actually, I'm going to pull up the video because I made a little in here. Yeah, I think what happens is it's filtering the entire value or values against it's looking for. It, uh, yeah, I know what's happening. Essentially, we need okay. to use a different action. There's a okay. action called, um, I think the name's changed, but if you search for filter by array is what we're okay. after. Okay. Because what's happening there is like, because that select is a multi-select, right? They can pick more than one. Right. And it's just trying to filter against one field for that in all the selective values, which no record's going to have that. It's really doing what you want is like an or. It's okay. The, the reason yeah. too is because that value of that select is an array, not a single word or anything. That, that's yeah. the root. Um, so what okay. he's going to show you basically is how to filter by an array instead of what you're doing, which is by a single value. Um, yeah, type filter. Would it be by another data set? Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> We're in the process of renaming, and we don't, Dory and I don't actually know all these names. <laughs> to make okay. them, you know, easier to understand when you just look at it. But we already have the not so great things <laughs> memorized. Yeah. So go to the set value so I can just see your original settings first. So it's just from the grid list. And. Um, okay, good. All right, let's go to that new action. So the starting data, we'll need to change that from a data collection to uh, element from element value, and okay. then select the grid. Cool. And then the starting data set field ID, they changed all the names and I haven't used it. <laughs> starting data set field. Okay, so this we need to select. Um, so select the collection that you're setting into the grid. Okay. And then the field you're trying to filter against. Okay, and filter data set. I think this is, oh, I don't know, actually. It's confusing. <laughs> filter data set. And then filter, filter data, data set. set. OK, I see. So that filter data set, this is the, the other array that we're going to filter the original <laughs> array with. Yeah, we need to work on those names. I feel like those are a little worse than what they were. So change that from a data collection to an element. And we're going to okay. select the select, the multi-select. OK. There we go. Yeah. 
and then the value um so that's the thing it's not this one we're going to change word, it to text because we need to statically set it and what is it id is the id uh, can you uh go uh, close this out and show me the properties of that select because i think you're setting those manually right and oh. go to the properties yep um so it's just value we can use id it's the same Okay, we can just use ID. Okay, go back to that new flow. And we're just going to statically just type the word ID. Uh, lowercase, all lowercase, sorry. Okay. And then we're going to keep only the matches, ignore if it's empty. And then the response, we're going to set it back into the grid. So change that instead of variable, that drop down where it says variable, change it to element. And then we're going to select the grid. So we're getting the value from the grid and putting it back into the grid after we filter it. Okay. Yeah, scrolling. <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. Got it. Okay, and let's delete the first action. No, it doesn't conflict with our setup here. <clears throat> I think it's, it's really thinking about today. that. Okay, there yeah. we go. <laughs> Okay, and yeah, I think that should work. Let's test it. Let's see. I think that's correct. Because Drew, the that select is outputting an array as the value. You know what? It's outputting an array, but I think it's an array of only values. Like I think it's just an array of like the string tenor alto base, not like JSON array. Gotcha. So we yeah. might run into an extra step where it's hard. Yeah, I'm not I think sure we might need to convert it. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see here. Let's see if, if this works. Awesome. If it doesn't, we'll need to put a breakpoint so we can see the actual value coming from that. Or actually, we can just inspect it and do a get value. That'd be easier. Okay. So there's nobody showing up when I click on tenor. Yeah, so it's, okay. so do this. Uh, right click on that select. Okay. I bet we'll need to do some data formatting. Yeah. yeah, do inspect. And then just right click on that selected row. Uh, yep. And then go to, oh, it's a different browser. Uh, what would it be? Is it log event? Maybe. Click that. Let's see. Does that throw it in the console? No. Oh, dude, I learned this new trick. Perfect timing. This is in the like if you're selected on it in the elements, uh -huh. you can just in the console type dollar sign zero dot whatever. And you oh. don't have to set global variable or anything. Cool. Let's try it. What are you going to uh, do right now? Set value on it? Uh, do a get value. Or a get value, I mean. Capital V, yeah. And then uh, it's a function, so open, close, parentheses. Yep. Hit enter on that. That's just a string because one selected. Try selecting uh -huh. multiple and doing that same thing. We'll still need to handle it, but. Yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. Just press up instead of, oh. yeah. Oh, we're, oh, it's not set to be a multiple select. I bet. Is that something that might be going on? Maybe. That's not a correct value. Uh, right? Do this. Press up again. And instead of get value, do get data. Yeah. No, it doesn't do that one. Um, go back to the studio. Let's confirm. But no, if it lets you, that means the settings on. No, yeah, that's when I was saying it. I was like, but it let you select multiple. Yeah, it might be a bug that we'll need to go review. Because what I would have expected was the multiple values that you selected would be the output when we're getting the value from it. Right. Um. Let me see. One second. I'm guessing this is going to be a bug on our end. Like, yeah, uh, I think so too. But you could get around it by 
instead of using the select, you can build, use a repeating list with the list row and do your own. Cause that'd actually be cleaner anyways. Um, Cause I know that one will output an array for sure. Um, so instead of having a drop down, have a, a repeating list, a repeating list of options that they uh -huh. select from. Yeah, yeah, and you just set the value good. into the repeating list statically. Um, you just set an array statically. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then you just change those actions to, uh, but give me one second. I remember this being the thing. I wonder if there's like a different path for the multi-select. Trying to remember. Yeah, Jeff, you and I were going back and forth on this in Discord, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that example I sent you, um, I can certainly... I can either pattern that out uh, and send it to you, or I can uh, at the very least give you access to see the flows and everything. Yeah. So is that what you did? You is this an array? Yeah. This is this is a that's a repeating list, and what happens okay. when you select one? It puts a um, basically it updates an array of values on the parent page that mm -hmm. use and it uses that array to filter. Basically, it's filtering a data set by that array of values to then create the experience that you're seeing here. Um, so this would probably be the method that yeah. I think to Dorian's point is what you would. Uh, yeah, and then you can control I like this. Spelling, which is a lot yeah. cleaner. Because on the select, they're so basic. Like you could do some CSS, but they're limited. Um, right. Yeah. And you but regardless, we still need to look at that bug long. anyways. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Josh. Yeah. I, I was just saying you could, the, the cool part here too, is you can just create any experience that you want for them, like selecting and everything. Um, yeah. This is what I did here. Um, yeah, this is awesome. I like this a lot. I'll get you, uh, DM me on Discord and I'll make sure okay. I get you that product. I'll probably create just a template so that you can import it. Okay. Thanks. For Perfect. Nice. And then I will write up a task for the other thing we saw. Yeah, yeah, because that, that should get resolved. Or at least we can get clarification if there is a specific path. Because uh, I remember looking at the multi-select before. I remember there was an issue when you would save. It wasn't saving all the selected values. Um, so it either broke or there's a specific method. And yeah. Okay, something we need to accommodate. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, cool. So I will write up a task for that. Um, I think, are we good, Jeff, or did you need something else? The only other thing was just in here, the, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to say, this is the minimum amount of experience that somebody has. And so I want to filter by this being the, 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 the minimum. So when I do a math function, I can't select the, the element um because uh, because i'm not able to see the elements on this page it it doesn't i'm not, I'm not really explaining very well i think i know what you mean but yeah it's probably easier to show it yeah i'm trying to where's the yeah. math jen <laughs> oh, i gotta show my work <laughs> show us the math <laughs> Okay. And after Jeff wraps up, um, let's scoot over to Christopher Browning. If you are still on the call, we can go over your questions. And then um, we've got Zenny, uh, AKA John, uh, who we'll go to after that. Okay, well, maybe if I just do it like this, then it'll work. Oh, that is, um, that's what wasn't working before? Right, this was showing me elements from a different page. Oh. Um, but actually, no, this this was the, okay, I remember what the, the problem was. It was something, it was, um, I did this within, I did this one step down. Mm, maybe there's like uh, uh, right. a reference not being passed for the correct right. page context. Yeah, I think that's what it was. So I think if I do... Yeah, like do a variable, do the math with the weight, and then just use the result from that variable 
downstream. Put this into there. Uh -huh. I think I think the problem I was running into is if I want to, I want to have all of these working at the same time. So I want this to be the minimum plus this. Yeah, and you would you know, use this. that same action or probably a combination because it depends on the value. If it's an array, you need to use this one. If it's a single value, there's another action just like that one that says single value. And essentially, okay. you're putting them one after another with weights in between. But the first ones, uh, if you scroll to the bottom of this one, like all the arguments, instead of setting the response into an element, you would set it into a variable. Oh, okay. And then the, the one after it, if you scroll back to the top, instead of getting that value from the element, you're getting it from the variable from the previous action. And, and you do that all I the see. Way until the last one is the one that will set it back into the grid. That's what I was, that was my problem. I was trying to do everything in one action mm. to set the, to set the grid list. And I ended up with it so far down that it wasn't referencing yeah. the, the right page. Yeah. And so, okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that makes sense. Make it a all variable. Right. So and then have it snowball. For Jeff cool. is to have one flow that does all the actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with weights in between. A bunch of flows. Okay. I um I can show this really quickly. Just I think it'll be helpful if I show this if people find this. Um, yeah. So let me share my screen real quick because this is the exact setup that I have here. Um. So this is I believe that th this is the the flow that's running on that page, Jeff. Whenever uh -huh. you select a different category, um, and so. These transform JSON functions have been renamed to the filter by data set by single value or 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 by data set. So ignore the transform JSON. They're just renamed. Um, okay. But you, I basically on page load, I set a variable called all features. So I have all the data available always in that variable all features. And every time I change the search mechanisms of a selection, I rerun this flow. And so it goes back to the, the global variable with all of the data and then starts to transform it and remove, uh, basically start doing the matches step by step with this weight as Dorian mentioned. And then the output of each action is a new variable that basically is just the variables declared and then renamed or not renamed. It's like declared and then reused to do the next manipulation. And then the final step is setting that value into the repeating list element. Again, this is dated, so it says grid list, but into the repeating list element to display the results that you want. Okay, so, that makes sense. Yeah. This is what I'm going to send you so that you can uh, mimic off of this because uh, it'll be more helpful to click through a little bit probably. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yep, we got you. Nice advanced filtering. Hey. It's awesome. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> uh, okay, so Christopher or Jeff, we all good? Sweet. Okay, Christopher, welcome to Office Hours. What can we help you with? Hey, y'all. It's good to be here. I got some of my answers or to the questions I had just by being on this call. So thanks a lot to the very first person doing the tool tip. I realized I have to do a. Well, I have to do like a. Uh, absolute and a relative or something inside each other to get the tooltip to show up correctly. So thank you for that. Um, so let's start off with a state problem. I got to share a screen. Hang on. Let me get back. There's Dorian's beautiful face. It's going to go away now. Okay, everybody sees that, right? Yes. Um, what I'm trying to do uh, may not make... I'll step you through it. Um, I just like something here. And if I go back, I go to a different page and I come back, I would like to have the last selected item stay on the page. And so I was trying to just put it in a variable in the page. And so when the page reloaded, it come back and look at the variable. But I think the state goes away once the page um, unloads, right? Yeah. I tried to put it to like the parent object, but I couldn't reference the variable. Yeah. Yeah. I think the best scenario for this, like if you want to stay with variables, which I probably would, is put it in the root and read it from the root. Oh, instead of parent, put it to root. Yeah. 
Okay, let me try you that. You could get it to work with parent. Like, there's nothing wrong with that approach, but like root makes it just like everything easier. It just clears it up, you know? Yeah, it's a little more global and mm -hmm. you can access it from anywhere. Let me show you. Uh, let me, I'll jump in it real quick. I think I can make sure I get that right one. This should oh, be yeah, it. That's why the parent didn't work. So, you know, it's a component. So when you put in the parent, it's putting it in, yeah. Yeah, the like root would be. The I should have been. You would have to right. go parent, parent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Well, try. Let me try putting in root. We won't take up time on that. So great. Let me put a note down. Root. Okay. Now the next fun one. Uh, let's go back here. We're starting off with the really easy ones. You know, we talked about doing easy wins. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. Uh. Is it this is the one? No, no. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot to update my uh uh oh no, here we go. Okay, beautiful. I have this all spit it out. Is there an easy way to make all of these line up, all the rows line up nice and easy? Is this a grid list? Is that the best way to do it? Grid list for sure. Is that value an array originally or uh it's a collection. So oh, it's see. just, just, it's oh, just a repeating yeah. list. It's all it is. Then yes, I, yeah. just, I would put it into a repeating list. And then the repeating list row is pointing to that row. Um, or is it already doing that? Is yeah, that he's already uh, doing that. Um, you're, you're talking about oh, format it, right? Yeah, Usually. it's just style. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just formatting. I just want to, I didn't, um, well, here. I can Sometimes I can tell you a quick style to put on, um, yeah. or if you want, you can ask more questions. I don't know how familiar you are with CSS, but there is a really quick way to fix it, but it's with a, a property that's fairly complex. Oh, okay. Well, so I'm you. I'm fairly intermediate. I wouldn't say I'm advanced, okay. but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just display grid. The reason I say is because like it can balloon out a lot of things. It can get really complex, but to do what you're trying to do, we can add a few properties really quickly, and it'll it'll snap right into place. Okay, what would It'll you like be, me to do? On the row page, so like that single row, go to there. Yeah, all right. I got. Do you guys? Is there a shortcut like in in uh, in Photoshop? You hit the space bar, you get like the little hand that you can move things around. Do you have a shortcut like that at all? We're working on it. We, we okay. have that in our list of of uh, like bugs and and things to add, uh, but it's not in there currently. Okay, let's actually know any of these will. Um, Actually, this is the one right here. Oh, so okay. here's the uh, repeating row list. Yep. And so the outside div, so there's like page body and then right below there's that div. Yeah, right yeah. on there. You can do this for now in uh, in inline style. So you click on it and then go to styles. It's you can do cool. it for now inline just to see it, but eventually you'd probably want to move it into a class because you'll want to maybe like do more with it. But it's there's moving. a green styling, yeah, right there. It's Oh, you know what? Maybe I'm just too far out. Your faces are hiding things. Oh, oh, sorry. There we go. There we go. I thought it wasn't loading. I was just like, it's not loading. I don't know what to do. All right. Here we go. Inline <laughs> well, you already style. have a class on there if you want to use it. I don't know if, it, if it's global. If you want this to apply everywhere that app list item class is, you could use this. Or you could just add this inline right now to, to, to see let's it just, first. Let's throw it inline first. So, yeah. So display grid is the first pro property. Uh, now, is there a way to search? Because I thought I came yeah. up here. Yeah. If you go to use props in the bottom, especially if you're intermediate with CSS, you might even prefer this all. Like I use this always, but right there is how you do it. And just start, start typing display. Okay. And then that when you select grid. So that's the setup. And then uh, to give it like the, the template for the for the how you want the columns, there's another property you add. So if you go to new property, you can start uh it's grid dash template dash columns. You'll see it pop up in a second. You template. Dash template. You'll probably see just that. Oh, yeah, select that columns one. We'll try so it again. Little thing. Hey, sneaky one. <laughs> Good test template. Okay, I'll try not to move the mouse too much. All right, <laughs> columns right here. Yeah, yeah. And so what this uh, this value expects is like it's like a template you could think of it for your columns. It expects like a value for each of your columns. So if you have four oh. columns and you want them 100 pixels each, you write 100 pixel space, 100 pixel space, 100 pixels. Yeah. The trick to it though, also where there's a, a unit called FR, fractional width, I think it stands for. Yeah. You can write one FR. So if you have four columns, write one FR space four times. 
one fr one fr one fr you know oh i see one fr one and that'll basically make it even number of columns and then like you can do really cool things with this like if you wanted the first column to always be 200 pixels width but the rest to like evenly fill the space that first one fr you can write 200 px and leave the rest as one frs so so anyway i'm just trying to say there's more to it you don't have to do that now um you get a lot of control but at a basic level um you can see there it popped into place and if you have five rows just add another one i got i got a fifth one as well yeah yep there Look at go. that. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Chris. Oh. Yeah. Look at you, you CSS master you. I'm calling you up anytime. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, okay. Let's go to the next one. Um preserve state was a big one. Okay. There's a bunch of other ones that this minor minor ones are there. Now, this is the most important one. I want to do some functionality that's similar to, um, uh, here we go. Um, what you would see inside of Airtable. And I don't need you guys so much to code it, is to tell me how at least a step-by-step -step do it. So this product type is a relationship to this table here just product types, right? And this, it essentially becomes a many to many. So there's many items here and uh, many products could reference them all. Mm -hmm. And then the little chip that's here is just referencing to um, this type. Well, I call it type ID, but it's just a short little code. What I love to be able to do is when you add an item, right? Something like this, it can throw up this list. Now I can get this list, that's easy. Throw it in a pop-up, right? It's the idea of once you click on it, that then I'll populate this box. Now, does that make sense? And also yep. when they have this functionality, so like when I click on it, it goes from a display state to an actual select state. And then also, if you happen to click on the X, it would delete the, uh, I guess, reference to the many-to-many -many table. Yep. yep. Does that, make, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So conceptually step me through how this is done. Doran, you want me to take it? Or are you going to take it? Yeah, you can go. Um, well, conceptually, first thing I would say is in Builder, almost everything that you're talking about here is a repeating list. Yeah. Like that's how you build. Like, I mean, in, in, in general, that's a true statement with Builder. Like almost everything is a repeating list. Yeah. Um, so... Think of it that way. So the first, the first kind of half of it is you have your database set up. So that's the yeah. first thing. I don't know how far you've gotten on that as far as the, the database set up for many to many, but we should start there. Yeah, I'm seeing if that uh, I saw this popping. I was making sure that we didn't screw it up too much really quick. <laughs> I think it's just because we did that. Yeah, when you change, it pushes the change, but it resets the data. Yeah, it's really slow so right now. It out. It must be because we're at Zoom. It could be from the screen sharing, but also who knows, you know. Yeah. We'll let that load and I'll try to get the, the database set up. I think I've got this set up correctly. Um, I may not have a relational table set up yet. Uh, and there's a, I think, is it in actions or elements where we have the tags? That's a similar setup that he can look at. You mean like uh, in the studio? In the studio. Mm-hmm. I don't know actually where we have tags for this studio. Or <laughs> right, I'm letting you guys talk. So do you want me to do something? Um, I think yeah, you can you can go to one of those collections that's in the, or, or I guess that maybe just tell me what it is products and product types. Okay, so relating product types is the one that's similar to if we go back to here, it's this long list, mm -hmm. right? Same one. It's real slow. Sorry. Um. So I've got the data already in. Yep. Yep. And I think that we'll back out is to do the uh, many to many relationship table, which I think would have to get done, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and what all that is um, from the database, database point of view is like a new collection that has yep. two fields the, the product ID and the product right. type ID. And the product type ID. Um, and so my, 
let's start off. Let's start as a little bit more simple. Um, let's go back well, to here. We can, yeah, and we can also still talk concept. I just want to make sure that concept yeah. was squared yeah, away. Yeah, that I understand that part. Concept of that makes sense. Um, but, yeah, because but basically that building block, having that table with both IDs matched up and builder grid lists, like you use those two things to build everything else out. So anytime you need to do a list, you're going to like reference that first, that relational column to either make sure it's there or to find out which product it is or to find out which product type it is. And then you do a second call using that ID you got to like pull in the actual data. Yeah, I got that. Actually, I'll show you. I'll show you that I actually know, I understand the concept is okay. if I go, uh, I think, is it designs? I forget which one's okay. So here, um, this is the, uh, <laughs> the styling problem that you guys solved. This is actually a, uh, a, a, a call to a different table when you see it pop up. So the, the information that this shows on the pop-up is not related to this table here. So I get the idea of how to use uh, uh, like the, the like key the the, yeah. or the relationship to another table. Yeah. So okay. which part, what part of it um, makes sense to talk about then? Because at this point, at that point, like those building blocks, you'll be able to do everything, but it's almost like you just get creative to show these different, different looks. Yeah, it's, the there's one little part I don't get on how to get, um, data in and out, like if you want to delete a record or insert a record. So displaying the record's fine. So like, here's an example, like this is essentially like the, the little chips here, same thing I'm doing here. Very easy to get the data. Mm -hmm. Now let's say I were to click on it and I wanted to delete a single item, Yep. Mm -hmm. right? So if I would come to here, I can't quite do it. If I were to like be able to, I'm trying to point with my finger so that doesn't help you at all. Yeah. But like, imagine like the mouse going over the part that says template four, right? And you were able to grab that ID and there's a little X to it. And I were hit the X button, it would delete it out of that list instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's part that I can't quite figure out what to do. Yeah. And there's an action that does that. Okay. Uh, it's called uh, repeating list dash remove. And in parentheses, it says current item. And essentially all you do is like in the UI, you have the X and you just yeah. set that action to run when they click it. Um, and there's a, there's a, like a got you with that action. Um, like after you do that, there's a toggle, actually it's on by default, so you don't have to worry about it, but it, what it does is it triggers the parent grid to trigger a save. And on okay. the parent grid on change, you're just saving its value to whatever database field. And that's, it. it's very simple. You just drop that action yeah. it to that event on the X and that's it. Okay. It automatic. Christopher, I actually just shared a link with you that to the um, docs for that action, that'll walk you through how to set it up and use it. Perfect. Now let's go to the plus one. So here's an example where it pulls up the whole list. Right. Again, that part's easy. This is a just separate table. It just throws it up. So the so there's a point where you click on this, mm -hmm. um, and then it's going to put a reference into that many the many table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Right. Or the collections table. Yeah. And the way you so, can accomplish that is on that row on the click event. Yeah. Essentially, just gonna set the ID of that row they clicked into a variable. If it's on the same page, then you just set it into the same page. But if it's like a child page, then just set it into the parent. And okay. what you do is uh, you'll have a special uh, save action that essentially saves the value of what's in the grid using the merge from the grid plus this new variable that you just set. And you do have to format the variable into an array. You can use the concatenate. And okay. that will just merge it together and save it together. Just okay. one that saves and then that's it. Hey, the, the grid will handle the UI part of it. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but we, we are at time. And I did um, see if John could 
um, if we could help out, John, can we hang out for a little bit? And do, do we have time? Yeah. Oh, are you asking him or me? Or us? I'm asking y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Um, Christopher, is it okay if we transition to you? I, what I do is I upload this recording after yeah. so you can go through and watch what the guys are telling you and start implementing some of that and then join us for the next office hours and we can keep going on the next subset. But I think, do you have enough to kind of chew on right now? I just, I got one last part and then I think I've got it all. Okay. Now, if I, if I click on this button, right? I don't need to store any IDs yet because all I need is to grab the ID from here, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. On okay, that so, row, this is where so you'll set the ID. So I click on an item here. I'll grab the ID. Where do I store the value of that? Do I, do I set it up to like the parent ID or like the parent table? The uh, table? So it, it depends when you click the plus, it depends where that page you're opening at exists. Uh, but in either case, that row is a child anyways to the repeating list. Right. So from the row, I would load this page, build that inside of the same row. Oh, like, you would? Okay. Yeah. Just because it makes it easier to, like, you're not going to load any data or anything to slow anything down until the user clicks the plus. So you just, so there's no like state problem or like data or like a bandwidth problem if you no, you make no, that for like gonna, every one of these gonna roles. It's going to be raw elements, and it'll be very basic. So it's the div with a repeating list. Just don't set any binding or any data into it. Um, so it's just two elements essentially. Okay, so uh, if you don't bind the data, then when do you, when do you get the data? When they hit the plus is when you'll load it. So when you I get see because that, that div's going to be hidden by default. It's, it's kind of like a light box, right? I get it. When you it. show on the show is when you'll also set the data into the grid, which will render. And it'll be okay. Fast. It's very all right. I got it. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Okay. We keep talking in Discord too. Sorry, Cora. Just oh, keep, yes. keep asking in Discord. Yeah. You don't have to wait yes. till next yeah. office hours. Thanks, Cora, for the extra time. That really helped. Yeah. Us. Yes. Please do. And definitely, I know if we didn't get to your answers or questions today, just keep asking them in the Discord, and we we spend time in there um, when we come up for air after fixing 